It's only fitting to see the biggest stars of cycling choose the toughest cycling routes. But in a less predictable move, Garrett Thomas has chosen the Giro over the Tour as his next playground. While the Italians must be delighted to have the Welsh legend on board, it's also a delightful twist for fans. So let's see, what convinced the three-time world champion to choose the Giro over the Tour? And how he's racing to stop the demolition of the Mandy Velodrome? First up, Thomas's history with the Tour de France. Before we jump into the present day, Day, it's important to look at the sparkling history between the Welsh rider and the Tour. It would be easy to dismiss it as bad blood to choose the Giro over the Tour, but the rider's track record at the Tour is nothing short of spectacular. Since his debut with the Tour de France back in 2007, his first race with it wasn't anything to write home about, finishing 140th out of 141 finishers, but it was the start of a magnificent journey on the route. In the subsequent years, he's shown his prowess, winning the first stage of the 2017 Tour and also becoming the first Welshman to win a yellow jersey. There was no stopping the freshman as he raced to win in the Stage 100 of the 2017 Tour. Apart from becoming the Sports Personality of the Year, he also brought glory home for the Welsh, becoming the first to win at the coveted event. In another big win for the Welshman, he finished third at the 2022 Tour de France. All this goes to show that the Welshman has had a lot of first with the touring event. So what compelled the unofficial Welsh mascot for the Tour to take a break and join the Giro up next. Now for how does changing routes change the whole tour? While the pedigree of any tour stays the same, the routes change year after year. With the latest announcement of routes for the Tour and the Giro, Garrett's camp found it hard to justify joining the Tour de France. One of the reasons put forth by Thomas himself was the lack of kilometers against the clock. These sprints are crucial for the racer, whose specialty isn't restricted to any one terrain. In fact, his biggest specialty is racing, holding fast, and making up for any difference along a straight stretch of road. When the stretch is longer, it's easier to stretch those legs and also secure a much needed lead. Every inch of a stretch counts in a route that literally decides the outcome of the race. This makes it ripe for a change in scenery, a different atmosphere, and a less explored hunting ground for the veteran cyclist. And the Giro could be all of those things. Furthermore, he's simply not had that much experience at the track, riding there only a total of four times since 2008. So it's a way to explore new ground, but importantly, to win at it too. Let's look at the underdog story that's dogged Thomas even as he sprinted to the top. The significance of the change is not lost on the Welshman, who's been an underdog leader for most of his career. Even as he took home the third podium for Wales, the 36-year-old veteran still lags behind his competition. Yates and Pidcock, he's done throwing it back and instead looks forward to leaning ahead of the competition by exploring new terrains and hopefully bigger wins at one of the biggest events in the game. His podium wins notwithstanding, he's also no longer aiming to be the first Welshman, which is a title the Cardiff native's been saddled with throughout his career, but instead will make it on his own as a cyclist. When surrounded by such competition and in a race to distinguish himself as a cyclist first and foremost, it's important to test your limits. One part of this change in strategy may be to give him more breathing ground and playtime in other tracks than the Tour de France, which he's taken to a grand total of 11 times since his debut in 2007. The waters have also warmed up a bit and no longer present the same thrill or chill to the player, as he's taken home both the first, second, and third positions since 2018 alone. It simply wouldn't be as impressive to win a fourth podium win for the player at the same tournament. What's more, the Giro's no cop-out. The commitment shown by the Welshman in the past is no joke, especially now that he's in his 36th year. Cycling as a whole requires a lot of physical exertion, which doesn't come with age. What does come with age is experience, and there's no better way to build experience than on a relatively untouched track. That's not to say the sportsmen will have an easier time of it at the Giro. In some ways, it's going to be even more difficult. Yes, it's a lot less intense, and its 70-plus kilometer stretch is an easy consideration to choose over the competition. But it's still all hands on deck for a 2023 season that might make it or win it in terms of legacy points for the player. Again, as he approaches the twilight years of his racing career, with a lot less competitive cycling on the cards, as he reaches the latter half of the 30s, the 2023 season proves to be demanding demanding and decisive for his career's long-term legacy. His competition also had no first-timers, with the world champion Remco Evenpoel in the race for being one of the participants. We're also sure the competition is going to become richer and, as always, more difficult as the participants seek action against the clock that's just missing from the Tour de France this year. Not to mention, the Welshman's recent spell with the Giro hasn't been very fortunate, but he's not set to take off his gear just yet. And that's a win already from the veteran cyclist with 17 years in the professional 
career. Making it even more impressive is his dedication to taking up new challenges, and the latest challenge for him is the Giro. Without any strategy on the cards yet from the player, whether GC tilt or stage hunting, we can still expect that he's going to come out with a new technique. That's particularly important, as his tact in previous years didn't pay off quite as expected, with a two-time Olympic gold medalist crashing out of his last two Giro races. But that was then, and this is now. But what's changed? Well, the racer is much more relaxed and seems to be confident. One factor leading to that confidence is his recent Tour de Suisse victory and just being in good shape. Plus, you can be sure the decision to race the Giro is not one that he's taken lightly, as he has shown considerable attention to detail in the past. Most recently, he missed the Grand Boucle, counting his time in the trialing as less than optimal. The self-realization that he brings to the table ensures, at least, that's given due thought to the decision to join the Giro too. But sports are never disconnected from the real world. Their impact is not just on scorecards and podium wins, it's also in real life where these sportsmen take their start from. Who'd know it better than Thomas himself, who'd started off from the Mandy Flyers Cycling Club at just 10 years of age. The Cardiff native received much love and support from his hometown, and now it requires the same from him and other cyclists. Coming up is the Cardiff cycling community's race to keep the Mandy Velodrome. For a lot of Welsh cyclists, including Garen Thomas, the Mandy Velodrome was their first training ground. But it's a fight for survival at the Velodrome, which is facing eviction from its home in Mandy Park. In its place, the proposed expansion of Cathay's High is supposed to take place, but education and extracurriculars go hand in hand. As the life stories of many cyclists have shown, locals know it all too well. Who's racing to appeal to the Cardiff Council to keep the protected status for the Velodrome? That's serving the community in more ways than one, by investing in the future of cycling in the area. It's also a low-cost effort that requires little input from the council, aside from passion and commitment towards cycling. But the proposed redevelopment of the Velodrome has raised eyeballs from many notable personalities in cycling and in the community, including Alan Davis MBE, former coach to Garrett Thomas. Finally, will the Welsh lose their rights to cycle in peace? Whether the council gives in to the community's demands and stays the order on the demolition of the Velodrome remains to be seen. But the community's efforts towards the site show the love and utility that the Velodrome has received and continues to give to the community. It's also one of the rare non-profit sites in today's commercial cities. Locals also contend that the purposed redevelopment of the Velodrome into a for-profit cycling course goes against the spirit of communal good that the Velodrome has stood for. While facilities are certainly welcome, to use them for profit would diminish the impact of the good it has done in the past, including launching the careers of such legends like Luke Rowe, King, Duel, and Count countless others. It remains to be seen if the council will let the community and its beloved velodrome stay in peace, but the outpour of love and petitions it's gotten from the community shows it's considered a member of the Cardiff family. That's all for this video. What do you think? Will Thomas be able to take his successful streak from the tour to the Giro? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like the video, do press the like button. As always, remember to hit the subscribe button for more such content. We'll see you in the next one.